If you don't know, you're about to know right now. You're about to learn education. I'm Quindell Evans, and this is Blue Poet Tree Podcast. This is the Blue Poet Tree Podcast. It has three words. The word blue, the word poet, the word tree. BluePoetTree.com. Thank you for tuning into the Blue Poetry Podcast. This is where we speak about poetry. We speak about healing. We speak about success. We speak about successful, healthy habits. You know, the mindset that it takes to succeed. The mindset that it takes to heal. The mindset that it takes to achieve your goals. The mindset that it takes to be happy. The mindset it takes to achieve the best out of life. We all want the best. We all want to be happy. We all want to be at a state of peace. I mean, hopefully we all want these things. But habitually, we do things that stop us from getting these things, stop us from achieving these things, whether we consciously know it or not. Some of us habitually are sad. Some of us habitually complain. Some of us habitually surround ourselves with people that's not pushing us. Some of us habitually stay in situations and relationships that aren't healthy for us personally. And this is how we block our own greatness, you feel me? On this podcast, we talk about these things, and specifically from Quindell's perspective, from from my perspective, you know, and I'm studying myself, I'm learning about myself, and I'm I'm doing certain things that's allowing me to reflect on myself in certain ways, so this podcast allows you guys to witness my growth and also learn about me and my projects and who I am and what I do. You know, I don't just do this podcast. I create products. I'm an author. Um, I'm a game designer. I have a card game. Um, You know, I'm a thinker, and I'm also an actor. You know, not necessarily like I'm in movies, but I I used to act, too. I used to act in plays, but I like to take action on my ideas. Whatever I think, I like to do, you know, so it's important for me, personally, to think positive. It's important for me to think things that... It's important for me to think about goals. It's important for me to think about self-development. It's important for me to think about discipline and self-improvement because I'm going to do what I think, you know. So I think that that's how we all work, personally. Um, But I do think that's how we all work. So I want to help, you know, people see things in ways that allows them to think more positively, more deeply, so that they can act more positively and more deeply when they do things. So... I'm going to start this podcast off with a poem, and then I'm going to go into an affirmation, and then we're going to discuss the affirmation and how it relates to me, my life, and hopefully you all as well. So the poem for today is it's called Dreams Trust. You know, I begin a poem with dreams, and I end with trust. So dreams are on the other side. I remember dreaming of light in the dark. Dreams of light in amusement parks where both red and green means go. Don't know where to start, where to go. I just know that I'm never going back home. Never going back to those days. This is now my house. I got on so many rides, I screamed my tonsils out. I'll make this dream real. When I wake up, dreams are on the other side of trust. You feel me, them? Snap it out for me, snap it out for me. You know we snap it out. You know what I'm saying? If you feeling that, snap it out. Dreams Trust, right? And I wrote that poem um, last September, you know, when I was um, pretty much having meetings and we used to all, you know, say words. This is something I do in my um, poetry and writing workshops. I'll recite a poem or a song or read a passage or something and then I'll ask people what what's one word that describes what I just shared and whatever their word is they start their poem or writing with that and they end with the person's next to them word you know so whoever I was doing this exercise with they were was trust that's the word they thought of and my word that I thought of was dreams so that's a little something I like to do at my workshops so today's affirmation is I am whole and I'm always complete but to continue to grow I know that there are things I will delete 
this affirmation, one more time, one more time. I am whole and I'm always complete. But to continue to grow, I know that there are things I will delete. You feel me? First thing first, I appreciate who I am at this moment. You know, I'm everything I need to be. At this very moment, I'm everything I need to be. I have everything I need. Um, That's why it's like I'm whole. I'm always complete, you know? But just because I'm whole and I'm always complete don't mean there's no room to grow. Don't mean there's no room for improvement, you know? I'm going to always be whole and complete, but there's always room for growth. In the moment, I'm whole and complete. I'm not partly complete. I'm not halfway complete. I'm not 20% complete. Um, as a being, as a person, as a man, I'm 100%. I'm here. I'm fully present in this moment. I'm fully me. I have everything I need to... If if there's a project or something I'm working on that's 20% done, me putting in my 100% will make that project 30% by the end of the month. Uh, you know? So, we'll make it 40% by the end of the week. You know, whatever it is, whatever goal I have, I have to be, I want to be 100% present. I want to be 100% in. I want to be whole. I want to be complete. I want to know that you know, there's nothing missing. And this is one of those affirmations that is tackling or grappling with the the emotion or the idea of insecurity. You know, sometimes we feel like we're not enough. Sometimes we feel like we don't have enough. We're not doing enough. We're putting ourselves down. We're thinking negatively. We're playing victim. We're, you know, like not necessarily positive about our own self image you know we, we we don't you know we don't discipline ourselves to be consistent enough with being positive and working on ourselves so this affirmation is about reminding myself that I'm whole I'm complete it's okay I'm not I'm not missing anything I'm not doing you know anything that I you know like like I'm I'm good you feel me it's going to be times I do things wrong. It's going to be times I do things I might think negative or I might complain, and, that, and that's okay. But in the moment, it felt right, you know. In every moment that we do these things, we feel whole, we feel complete. We feel like it it completes us and makes us one in a moment, you know. But there's always room for growth so you can complain less, so you can do wrong less, so you can think negative less. And that's what that means, you know, like, that's it, like. There's always room for growth. I'm whole right now. I feel whole. I feel one with myself right now. But there's always room for growth because there's moments. There's there's moments that may shake me up. There's things that may distract me. There's instances that might interrupt my my frequency. You know, my my level of thinking, my way of acting, my way of acting and going about things may be come slightly off. You know, so. There's always room for growth. If I eat healthy, there's always room for growth. You know, like, I, just because I eat healthy, am I exercising? If I'm exercising, am I eating healthy? If, you know, how can I grow? You know, and the major part of the affirmation is, I know there are things I will have to delete. I know that I will have to delete some negative thoughts. I know that I will have to delete some actions, hanging around the wrong people, like I said, or, or, Spending my money a certain way in order to save more. I know that this, I know that there were this things is gonna have to change about myself in order to grow, in order to get to where I want to go. And it's always a place to want to go personally. You know, it's always a goal, no matter how far or high or what I complete and what I achieve. There's always room for growth, and in order to to, to fill that room up, there's going to be some things I got to delete. There's going to be some things I got to add. There's going to be some adjustments and some changes I got to make about myself. So part of this affirmation is just acknowledging that there's some things I need to change about myself, you know, and I feel like we all have those things we know we want to change. We know we might want to stop smoking cigarettes. We know we might want to stop being friends with this person because they are bad for us. We know we might want to, you know, start doing something more, start reading more. We know we want to get out of a relationship. We know we want to start practicing our talents. We know we want to start focusing on something, 
you know, we want to stop focusing on something, whatever it is, we got to acknowledge that and start, like, taking the necessary action to, you know, make that, make that happen, you know, so that's inevitable, you know, growth requires me to learn new things, you know, to do new things, to be a new me, you know, in order for me to, to do something new that I haven't done, I'm going to have to learn something new that I haven't learned or probably never grasped, you know, like a lot of times we hear certain advice or we get certain knowledge, you know, we gain certain knowledge that we never utilize, we never apply this knowledge, you know, like, so in order to apply this knowledge that we probably already knew, it's going to take a breakthrough of some sort, some sort of action that hasn't been done before or that hasn't been done in a disciplined or consistent way before in order for it to actually work. If you want to go to the gym and lose weight, or if you want to go to the gym and gain weight, I don't know, whatever, if you go to the gym for different things, whatever, if you want to go to the gym and get your body looking how you want it to look or feeling how you want it to feel, you probably went to the gym before, but you didn't go consistently, you didn't discipline yourself to make it happen on a daily or weekly or scheduled basis, so, you know, it's about that vibe, you know, like, we we know in order to get a better body, gym, the gym might be something that we need. That's knowledge. We know that. But we haven't applied it. So, so in order to apply this, it might take a new attitude, you know? And that means deleting the old attitude of, oh, I'll go here and there. Take a new attitude on, I'm going three times a week, you know? I'm going twice a week. Whatever it is, stick to it, you know? When it comes to eating right, we know that eating Skittles and Starbursts and Oreos every day is not cool. But some of us, can't go a day without our honey buns. Some of us can't go a day without our Swiss rolls. Some of us can't go a day without our little Debbies. Some of us can't go a day without our Skittles. Some of us can't go a day without our side straws. Whatever it is, some of us are knowingly doing harm to ourselves, even though we know that we want a better body. We know that we want to feel healthy, you know? So it takes a disciplined or a new action, a new way of thinking about eating in order to take action on this on this habit that we want to pursue, this habit that we want to obtain, that we want to make a, a new habit or something that we want to do, you know? So in order to learn new things, some old things must be unlearned. Like, you know, for me, I stopped hustling on the train every day, you know, in order to learn how to support myself and create income in other ways, you know? So... During that time, I wrote for like five books. I created the Healthy Cigarettes. I sold pickup poetry cards, you know. Also began experimenting doing things like this podcast and began reading every day and, and exercising every day and developing helpful habits that I didn't make the time to, you know, when I was singing on the train every day. I was singing on the train every day. My song, You Want to Smile, every day. That's how I lived to support myself. And... You know, it was hard, of course, to create a new habit of doing other things. And I literally went through the motions. I literally was not mentally, like, you know, like, I don't, I wouldn't say I wasn't mentally ready, but I was mentally affected heavily when I decided to change that simple habit of finding another way to support myself. And I did. Ultimately, I broke through it. Ultimately, I broke through and found multiple streams of income, not like I'm super rich right now, but I can get by just as much as I was getting by singing on the train right right now, um, you know, so that is a part of, like, learning something new, breaking an old habit to create a new habit, you know, like, I know that I'm whole, I know that, you know, I'm complete, but to continue to grow, I know that there are things I will delete, you know, I know that while singing on the train, I'm whole, I'm complete know that but if I want to grow if I want to grow into something else if I want to not have to hurt myself because I was hurting myself singing on the train every day you know I was drumming while I was singing so my hand was getting very very injured if I want to grow and do something more safe for my body if I want to grow and, and you know maybe be a best-selling author if I want to 
be a businessman, an entrepreneur, spending all of this time daily, you know, singing on the train might not be it. You know, I still sing on the train sometimes, you know, once or twice a week, the most. But throughout my other five days, I'm working on myself in other ways, you know. And it it takes a, a, a discipline, actually. It, it, take, it takes a new habit. I had to delete a, a way of thinking, you know. You got to delete a way of thinking in order to... to create a new way of thinking. They say you are what you think you are. Or like, you know, like, so if you, you have to think like a blank to be a blank, you know? So I have to think like a author to be an author. Like how does an author think? Get into the mind of an author and then pursue that, you know? In order to become something, you have to first think it, you know? So, had to literally create a new way of, of, of thinking in order to pursue a different way of life. That was a totally different way of life for me, you know, like stop doing what is paying my rent and buying me food and putting clothes on my back and just cold turkey trying something different, you know, trying different things. And through it, I learned a lot about myself. I learned that there are so many different ways that I can create you know, that I can create. There's so many things I can create. There's so many ways I can create. There's so many ways to earn to earn a living, to create income in this world, you know? And I can tap into those things if I take the time to do so. And that takes spending less time doing other things, you know? So that takes deleting other things and growing in, you know, in other areas. If I del if If I'm spending time focusing on growing in one area, then it might mean spending less time growing or deteriorating in other areas. A lot of time we're spending time on things that are hurting us, detrimental to us, de deteriorating our physical bodies, our emotional bodies, our mental bodies. You know, and it takes shift in the attitude and whatever whenever you get the chance to shift whenever you get the chance to change whenever you get the chance to to make that choice to grow in a different way in a better way in a more powerful way even if it's not better it's just different a lot of times doing things different that's not even in your comfort zone that's not even in your expertise it's not even in your field kind of allows you to grow it 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 allows, you know, like, this is what I'm learning. Like, I'm not a, I didn't, you know, like, I didn't know I was going to create cigarettes, you know, like, but, you know, I don't smoke cigarettes, I don't know, but it's, it's, doing that taught me something, you know, it's teaching me something now, like, I'm, I'm not aware of what it's teaching me yet, but I feel like it's teaching me different ways that I can create. I feel like it's teaching me different ways that I can make a living for myself. It's pushing me to do whatever I think of. You know, I thought of it and I did it. So, like, I feel like that is a really crucial part of of, of learning. You know, sometimes you got to do different things, do new things, you know. Um, and that that came from me deleting time from my daily grind, like my daily grind was singing on the train. I deleted doing that, you know, I slowed down with that, and I increased my my time, I increased the amount of time I spent creating other ways of income, creating other ways to express myself, creating other ways to create. You know, I still do music, I still sing, I still go to the studio, I still write songs every day, but the fact that I'm not on the trains every day gives me a lot of time to spend doing things like this podcast here, self-reflecting, working on other books, working on many different projects, networking with different people in different areas, you know? So there's no right way, you know? I could have been growing still singing on the train every day, 
but there's there's always options, you know, there's always different ways, and I like to do different things. So I feel like plenty of us have these ideas, and we want to do different things, but we're stuck in a cycle, you know, like we're stuck at a job, or we're stuck in a relationship, or we're stuck in a way of thinking that's limiting us, you know, so break it, like just break the cycle, you know, and, and just grow, you know. So like, I know that, I know personally, like, I, even when it comes to speaking, you know, I have to delete certain phrases I say in order to grow, you know, mentally, you know. I feel like sometimes we speak negative about ourselves, you know, we say things, you know. Like, for example, like, certain phrases and cliche ideologies are just shared among people, and some of them hold us back. Like, some of these things that we just say, you know, like, it's easier said than done, you know. I've adopted some of these things, you know, like, money is the root of all evil, or it's a cold world, or, you know. You know, like, oh, it's easier said than done. Like, these things kind of... Hold us back, you know, money is the root of all evil. It's like we need to pay our bills and stuff. So like is paying your bills evil? Like chill. So we need to like learn different ways of thinking, like adapt a different way, delete that money is the root of all evil stuff. And understand that the lack of money is the root of all evil. Someone who's who's operating from a, a impoverished mind state or I don't have enough mind state is gonna do things that may be risky and jeopardize their safety or the safety of others or put others in harm, you know, or, you know, careless things, you know, like stealing and, and robbing and, and laundering, whatever it is, you do these things because of a lack, like I don't have enough of it, you know, I don't have it, I don't have any at all, I don't have enough to do what I want, you know, so we, the lack of it allows us to to do harm to ourselves and others, which we might call evil, the lack of it. You know, like me coming from a family where, you know, we didn't have much, the lack of money allowed me, you know, to do certain things like max out a credit card and not pay it off, and then my credit's messed up. You know, whatever. So, like, these these are the type of things that happen when you have the lack of money idea, the lack of money ideology, but money is, is not the root of all evil, you know, because there's so many people who are well off and they give a lot and they're very positive people and they look out for people and they help out a lot, you know, so we need to let go of certain things like that, you know, like it's a cold world and like we'll attract just cold people and coldness and cold situations and and get ourselves into situations where we feel like, oh, that will remind us of our way of thinking. Yeah, it's a cold world. You know, we'll be reminded. <laughs> Everything that you that's in your mind, you're reminded of on a daily basis. Everything that's in your mind, you're reminded of on a daily basis. So it's all about what's in your mind. It's all about how you're thinking, you know. It's all about how we're thinking. If we think the world is a beautiful place, then we'll be reminded of all the beauty in the world, all the beautiful people in the world, all the beautiful things in the world, all the beautiful times we have, all the beautiful times that we're going to have. We're going to be reminded of it. We're going to be reminded. It's not a cold world. It's a beautiful world. Money is not the world of evil. Money is a tool that can help people, and sometimes people use tools to hurt people. You know, a hammer can... And a hammer can bang a nail on the wall, but somebody can hit you with a hammer. It's a tool, you know? So money can buy, can pay for bills, and then money can buy weapons. Like, it's a tool. People can use it in the wrong way, you know? So, like, it's 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 the world. The world is not cold. But sometimes it is. Sometimes it's hot. It's different seasons. But to just say it's cold is just negative, and it's not allowing us to, to reap the all the benefits that this world has to offer. So we need to just appreciate, you know. So this affirmation is, all, is also about appreciation, you know, realizing and appreciate, realizing and allowing, you know, myself to appreciate myself, allowing us to appreciate ourselves and who we are, we're whole, we're complete, you know. And 
if we want to grow, you know, I think we all want to grow. You know, we all want to grow, get better, you know, enhance, improve, you know, develop. There's going to be things we got to delete. There's going to be things we got to change. There's going to be things we got to do to to shift the frequency, to change our minds, because what's in our minds we're reminded of every day. You know? With that being said, if you don't know, you're about to know right now. You're about to learn. Education. You feel me, them? Thanks for listening to the Blue Poetry Podcast. Leave a comment, please. Share it. Share the podcast with people. I appreciate it if you share it. Tell your friend about it. You know, if you f- and, and tell me how you feel about it too. You know, like there's a feedback link in the in the in the, in the description. You know, there's a link to my music and all of that stuff too. Let me know how you're feeling about the Blue Poetry Podcast. You feel me? Let's go.